All right. For section 1.3, we're dealing with the concept of functions, which is perhaps one of the most important concepts in all of college algebra and is going to be reinforced again and again and again. I'd like to talk about the kind of underlying ideas of functions. So, first of all, a function is a relationship between two variables. And by that I mean somehow two quantities are connected. Yeah. Oops. Relationship. It's hard to write and talk at the same time. Especially when you're as dumb as me. Relationship between two quantities. And we'll get into some examples of that in just a second. Now, one of these quantities we'll call the input of the function, and the other quantity will be called the output of the function. Now, the only other thing that a function has to satisfy that a relationship has to satisfy in order to be a function is that each input is associated in this relationship to at most one output. So we'll think of inputs as x's and outputs as y's. So this is saying that each x value is associated to at most one y value. So that's rather abstract. What the hell do I mean by this? Well, let's take let's take a look at some examples. For instance, if I look at the collection of people in the US, each person pays some amount of money in income tax. And in fact, so that's a relationship right there, is how much did you pay in income tax last year. So that each person is associated with you know, a particular dollar amount. And so the person is our input and our output is the amount that that person paid in income tax last year. Now, it has to be the case that in order to be a function that each person, each x in this input has exactly one y value. So could it be the case that a person has two different amounts that they pay for income tax? Well, no. That's ludicrous. It's that each person pays exactly... There's one correct figure that they should pay in income tax and that they do pay in income tax. So this is a function because each person pays only one amount, you know, one specific amount of money for income tax. They don't have multiple payments. So, let's take another example. Hmm. 
let's say, you know, going with people again as our input quantity. And our output quantity is something like the number of hours spent sleeping. last month. So input is people, output is you know, hours. I guess I should just say the output is hours and the relationship between these two is the time spent sleeping last month. So, this would be something like a, um, there are people who do research on uh, sleep and sleep behavior. This would be a quantity that would be of interest to a sleep researcher, how people sleep. You take an individual person, either they slept some amount of hours or they didn't. You know, there isn't a, you know, multiple doesn't make sense. You know, how could a person sleep, you know, what, I don't know, just make up a number, 40 hours last month and 60 hours last month. That doesn't make any sense. So each person, each input, has exactly one output associated to it. So this is a function. All right. So done a lot with people. Uh, let's take an example of something like uh, plants. Take a look at you know, some collection of plants or so, and they're going to be associated. We're going to associate them with uh, a particular height, and the association between these two variables will be something along the lines of you know how much this plant, you know, a particular plant, changed in height. over the last year. So height or if you will uh, a length. So we're tying plants to a length by how much that particular plant grew over the last calendar year. And again very clearly you know, either the plant grew a particular height or it didn't grow that height over the last year. So again, this is a function. One more example, let's say we'll take a, um, a volume of alcohol And a, well, I've written this backwards. Um, nope, I did it again. I want days as my inputs and a volume of alcohol as my outputs. And this is the amount I drunk on that day or drank on that day. Now notice that again each day I either drank that amount of alcohol or I didn't. So this is a function. But 
there's nothing in the definition of function that restricts me from having an output associated with multiple inputs. In other words, it's okay if, you know, I drink you know, one can of beer or a bottle of beer on multiple days. So the output of one beer is associated with, you know, let's say the past three days. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. The only thing we can't have is a particular day associated with multiple quantities of alcohol drunk. That would disqualify this from being a function. But since that isn't the case, this is, in fact, a function.